Is a refeed day or cheat meal necessary to see success when dieting? Dr. Merrill with some insight from a diet coach who's been doing this for years now. Hopefully uh, you'll find this information about refeeds um, inform uh, information useful as you're thinking about dieting or uh, maybe some of the fails you've had in the past. Um, you know, what, what is the value of a refeed and cheating? So two things, physiologically and psychologically. So first of all, physiologically, it doesn't appear from the research literature that a, a cheat day or cheat meal offers any additional benefit than just straight up caloric restriction. Now, you know, I'm, I'm saying in general, okay? If you look at the statistical analysis, it's non, there's not a significant difference. If you look at the numbers, you'll see oftentimes, though, there's some lean mass that's been preserved. I'll leave it up to you to decide if a kilo or half a kilo lean mass preservation by viewing cheat meal cheat day is worth doing it. Um, so physiologically, though, it doesn't appear to be a, a you know, significant, um, and I use that statistically, but also significant in terms of its magnitude of importance just in general, not away from the, the statistical world. Probably physiologically it doesn't make a lot of difference. If we get down to some smaller levels, we could argue that a kilo, though, is a big difference in lean mass loss over time. So, you know, again, that's something you have to eyeball and decide for yourself. But statistically and just as a magnitude, it's not like you lost four kilos, right? Um, the real value of a cheat meal cheat day is the psychological portion. And so the psychological uh, part of this equation. Um, and so it's whether it's a cheat day or weekend or whatever it is, many times when we when dieting the verb here, we start to build up cravings and it's natural that that happens, things that we miss or whatever it might be. And so indulging those to some degree is necessary to release some of the pressure, so to speak. Now, a cheat meal could be cheat items, the things I've done over the years with clients that seem to be successful. So, you know, some people like, hey, I just want an ice cream cone or a little bowl of ice cream on Friday because that's what I do. Or my family has pizza on Saturdays. I just want a piece of pizza or, you know, two pieces of pizza. If anybody, you know, whatever. These are cheat items that could be cheat days. Uh, or excuse me, cheat items that could be cheap meals or they're smaller things spread out. You know, I had a piece of pie here. It's not really a meal. It was just a dessert. So you say two cheat items. Maybe that's more beneficial. You know, a glass of wine, uh, something you enjoy. So have that. Now, obviously, the more strict you are, the, the faster you lose weight. Uh, but those breaks may be necessary. It's, it, it, a lot of times we just view this as I have to go all in or I'm all out. Well, if you go all in and that means at some point you could be all out. <laughs> Sometimes you just give up. It would be better to say, just be honest with yourself, that I need a break while I'm dieting or I'm not going to be able to stay with it. If I can't stay with it, then what's the point? Right? So that is the value of psychologically. That's, that's the first part of that, of course, is relieving cravings um, and making sure that you can adhere. Now, obviously, you can't cheat for four days or have such a massive cheat meal or weekend that now it takes a whole week to get the blow off and you know, you're back to zero. That might be a good maintenance strategy, but if you're trying to lose weight, that's not going to be the way to do it. The second part of a cheat meal though, uh, what I like to see, and most of the time cheat meals just happen, a birthday party or whatever, um, is learning how to practice while you're losing weight, how to deal with bloat. This is so important. Bloat is going to happen. If, if you try to go so strict once you're in maintenance that you cannot that you, you're not going to allow yourself to eat off plan, you will go crazy. And and sometimes, you know, you could develop an eating disorder even out of this. Okay, I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just saying it, it can. Um, so be careful. Know who you are and, and how you approach food and if you're getting unhealthy with your approach. Certainly in maintenance, it should be a lot more of a relaxed approach. It should be eyeballing portion sizes or, you know, even if you had a day, your typical day, you might be kind of tighter on breakfast and lunch, let's say, but at, at dinner time, you relax a little bit. And you eyeball the portions. You enjoy a meal with the family, and you don't worry too much about the macros. Just kind of working as much protein and veggies as possible. Okay, but you're keeping an eye on your weight. So if you see you start to drift, or you have a big weekend or something where you're off plan, you know what you need to do after, and that's regain control. Regain control. Okay. There's nothing wrong with enjoying food. There's nothing wrong with being a little bit of bloat and feeling terrible <laughs> potentially. You're not trying to binge. It's not an excuse to, to lose your marbles. It's just saying, hey, this is part of my mentality with diet noun, not dieting verb. Or, you know, when we say diet, sometimes even that's just a verb. The thing about the diet noun is that you're going to get the bloat off. As long as bloat comes off, it's not a big deal. you got to take care of it immediately, though, in, in the sense that you, you've had a bad weekend. You know, mm, I'm going to need to get this off, this bloat off the next three or four days. So I'm going to have to be a little tighter with my diet. Okay, noun, diet. 
Now, that also infers that your diet is good, like your general diet is pretty good. Um, and so for some of you that may take moving closer to a, a, a healthy diet and a lot of times start with you at. So if, if that's just adding veg, two servings of vegetables a day to improve your general diet, and you know that that's what keeps you in weight maintenance and weight stable for the most part, then that that's what you do. And over time, you try to improve that. But that's a place for you to go back to is what I'm getting at. That diet is healthy enough that you know it maintains. Okay. And that when you go back to it and you pay attention and you're aware of what you're eating and you follow that, that diet closely, your diet, a little more closely, a little more strictly, the bloat comes off and in three days you're ready to go again to relax. So that's a good opportunity. And if you're trying to lose weight, you're back on the, on the rails again, you're losing weight. That's a, this, this cycle of bloat accumulation and bloat, dealing with bloat is a good time to practice while you're losing weight. Uh, and most people fail, uh, in my opinion, a little bit supported by research, and it's hard to tease this out in some studies, but my opinion, because they don't have a plan after they cut, uh, there's no maintenance plan, right? Or it's they've cut such a, so deep and so unrealistically in their diet or their expectations that now they can't sustain it. They give up because they get frustrated because they couldn't maintain that 25-pound weight loss, right? And maybe it's saying, hey, I'm going to gain five pounds of this back, and that's okay. But when I see, once I get weight stable now after that five-pound regain or whatever it may be, I'm going to be, I'm going to manage bloat carefully, but I've already done that when I was cutting, so I'm ready to do it. Okay. So that could be the value of a refeed as well. Going back to the original premise of this talk is physiologically some benefit, probably at a micro level, meaning it's not a huge benefit, but there's, there could be something there in lean mass preservation. Psychologically though, it relieves cravings and it gives you time to, it gives you a chance to practice of dealing with bloat. So when you move to maintenance, Bloat doesn't scare you. You know it happens. It's okay. Uh, you know that the range that your weight should be within. That's a different video, figuring that out. But once you're there and you, you go up and you see drift again, get back on plan, get back. You've already done that while you're losing weight. When it was easy to do and you were excited about losing weight, now when it transfers to maintenance, you're like, ah, I've done this before. Yeah, the bloat is, might take just a little bit longer to come off, but it's going to come off. Then I can relax my diet again and proceed. And so that cheat meal can provide that practice time. Um, and it's not as scary, right? Because it's, you're going to jump back into a cut, right? So if you're cutting and, and you pick up bloat, you're going to jump back into such a deficit that you're going to lose the bloat very quickly. So you can see the process at play. And then when you go to maintenance, you know it's not going to be as drastic of a loss after bloat, but you know what you need to do. And that's the point is this is, you know, successful lifelong maintenance isn't about just counting macros or whatever approach you take. It's a, it's a behavior change. It, diet is a behavior Okay. You, your diet includes food, things, but it's, it really encompasses your behavior and the way you approach food, what you use it for. Um, you know, some people use it for stress, or whatever, but we know these things. Well, it's starting to adjust that, uh, that approach to food and how you, you know, when you consume it and, and, you know, understanding that bloat happens and that's okay. And keeping a healthy, fo you know, healthy approach to food that you can create a balance. I often talk about clients, the balance um, between staying lean, but also enjoying life. And it, it exists. It takes some discipline. It doesn't take a lot of willpower per se. It takes some discipline. Those are different. Willpower doesn't last very long. Usually about three months as we see in January. All right. If you like this video, like it. If you have uh, anything to say about it, leave it in the comments. And certainly subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out videos all the time about nutrition, sport, and exercise science. Uh, I'd love to have you part of this channel. If you want to hit the notica notification bell as well, that'll let you know when I release a new video. Until then, I'll see you.